How about uh, three o'clock? So we're going to start. Yeah. <coughs> Councilors, are we ready? Okay, I'll call the regular scheduled council meeting to the city of Revelstoke to order. And with that, I'm looking for a motion to adopt the agenda. Mr. So Starling, that's a finger. All in favor? Passes. Adoption of the minutes of the regular council meeting of August the 12th. Council Scarcella, Council Wheelock. Discussion? All in favor? Passes. Announcements. Uh, a couple of interesting things I'd like to bring up. One, it's been a very, very busy summer in the community with virtually something every weekend up until this weekend, which is the annual Labor Day golf tournament, which are, some of us may be playing in. Councilor Scarcella, are you playing golf this weekend? I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> uh, anyway, I would like to compliment uh, staff and the committee for the homecoming weekend last weekend. A tremendous amount of excellent organization. It was really great for the entire community. So. I pass on my compliments to the staff, and particularly to uh, Mr. Nada, who worked with him on behalf of the city. Uh, the election packages are out. They're upstairs at City Hall. Uh, they've been a big seller for the first half hour, and then they've kind of slowed down. But those of you who want, pick yours up. With that, uh, there's a thing that happens with elections. And if you look at the timelines and count the number of council meetings between now and the election, some things just won't fit. Something like the bylaw would, would extend beyond the mandate of this council into the new one. So you'll see the council packages for the next couple of weeks become a bit lighter as certain matters that would require timelines and process to get over may be withheld until the new council comes into place. And the budget is a classic. Staff are preparing the budget, it will be ready within the agreed time frames. We may see the budget with this council but the new council will be the one that will approve it. Um, having said that, um, we've all got very busy schedules through September and October representing the city at UBCM and at various other places. So we're going to hit the decks running here, folks, for the next uh, nine weeks. I wish you all the best. Having said that, um, carry on. We have one delegation today, Joy Armstrong, on behalf of the Humane Society. <coughs> Recently, we've experienced an influx of pregnant cats and kittens at our shelter. 
In total, we've had 22 kittens at the shelter in the last two months, 10 of which have been born at the shelter. We also have another 10 adults in our care. This is the highest number of cats we have seen at one time in about eight years. Our goal is to rehome these kittens and adult cats in the near future as our shelter is nearing our limit. And will be overfull of these kittens mature and are not adopted out. One of the challenges we have recognized as a society is the cost that will be associated with all these kittens and the ongoing need for fundraising. Although funding, funding seems to be an ever growing concern for most nonprofit organizations, it will be especially needed in the coming months for us. We have also recognized a lack of public awareness. We commonly get questions from the public asking where are we located, how, how they go about viewing and adopting our animals. Due to these challenges and a recent influx of animals we have had, we have had, we see the need to raise some awareness. As such, we are pleased to announce on Saturday, September 13, we will be hosting an open house from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. This event will be held will let the public know where we are located and we'll let them come and take a tour of the shelter. We are hoping that we will be able to find homes for our kittens and maybe get some new volunteers as well. We will take this opportunity to educate the public about how many kittens and cats are without homes in our community. As always, we will continue to urge the public to spay and neuter their pets we can keep the numbers up, so we can keep the numbers of stray animals down. We would like to thank the City of Revelstoke and the Commissioners for their ongoing support and for supporting this important event. We invite City Council and staff and the public to come out on September 13 and visit us at the Animal Shelter. Thank you for your time. Anybody have any questions? Councilors? Just uh, kudos to your board of directors. I know you lost a couple of key people in the last uh, year. Mm -hmm. And uh, good idea on the open house. I think that's Thank a really good idea. On that's on Saturday, September 13th. Yes, it is. I've got some posters and cards to leave with you. Good. Thank you guys for that. Mr. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, we did at one time have an overpopulation of feral cats. Mm -hmm. do, do we still, uh, are we still in that situation? Uh, it is, um, what I find is there are a lot of cats out there that, like the pregnant mothers that came into us, they, there was no man, nobody came, and, and if they would have had kittens, and they would not not been handled, they would have become feral. And mm -hmm. I've also got six that I'm fostering that were found in the woodpile without a mom. So what? we have lots. Do you have a problem uh, on holding them? No. Get rid of them? no. Well, no, we, we, they will be put up for adoption. And, uh, mm -hmm. and they find homes? Yes. We, the, the people put in for an adoption and then we uh, meet with them and stuff and make sure they go to good homes. Because I noticed that the, 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 the euthanasia rate is very low. We don't believe in euthanasia yeah. in uh, the humane society. Joy, thank you very much. Thank you. For a good presentation. Please pass on our appreciation to the society. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Joy. Pastors, visiting the right business arising from the minutes of August the 12th, page one. Thank you. Page two. Yeah. Page three. On the housing society. So the lease has been signed by the society. It is in the two week advertising period, which is up on tomorrow. So I'll be in a position and Mr. Palmer to sign that lease as of Thursday morning, Wednesday afternoon. Um, and building permit, I believe, is still waiting for some detailed drawings and some sort. Is in the schedule for, for, for the building permit? Because we do need assistance in the last couple of years. So, can you tell exactly when the building permit be? Mr. Paul, Mr. Stroud? Your Worship, the uh, waiting for some additional drawings to come from the architect. Was from the civil engineer um, to complete the dry package for the building. And that includes the footings, I believe. 
There's a footing component. Uh, you receive some truss information, uh, some point load information that's been sent in uh, late last month on the way for uh, information related to the foundation as well as for the offset. So, so very critical pieces. Councilor Scarsoff, you good? Well, just that every week, every two weeks, the same, same story. So it's not good to have. Well, they, they will have a lease for a clock tomorrow. Just that worship the months go by and that the official date time to start it because it will cost the society and uh, more money for building the winter. It's a very crucial time for the for society and uh, the for the public Thank you, worship. Yeah, thank you. Anything else on page two? Page three. Four. Page five. Six. Seven. Two more correspondence. A letter from Paula Rogers request regarding her first poor service at the bus station including a very disturbing picture. You know, we, we refer this to staff for uh, perhaps bylaw enforcement on, on the site premises. Yeah. I think we should write as well. Mm -hmm. Your worship, I would suggest that uh, so staff uh, draft a letter and uh, send it to Greyhound as well. I'm pretty sure I read in here that she had forwarded this to Greyhound, but I think uh, they need to know that the city uh, supports the uh, upgrading of this. It's, it's appalling. And the, the picture doesn't even tell exactly how bad it is if you walk there and do it. It's, it's, it's appalling. It's the first thing a lot of people see when they disembark from the bus and that is what they need to change. I'm glad it's not a scratch this day. Councillor Scarcell? No, I just that. Uh, I'd like to put a going in motion that the council write a letter. Okay, I, was, I thought I had a motion, Council Nixon, Council Mr. Garcella, for it to look at bylaw, staff to look at bylaw enforcement and the letter to Greyhound. Is that is the motion I heard? Okay, mm -hmm. okay so we do have a motion. Three other councillors? Councillor Justin? Well, I mean, I guess I would like to see a little bit more proactive, cooperative. And to see what can be done in a positive manner rather than a negative, threatening manner. That's all. So, staff can just take that on it as they wish. I mean, perhaps there's something like the Economic Development Commission that want to be looking at as well. Questions? Questions? All in favor? Opposed? Passes. No, all business move on to new business. I may relocation of funds request. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, recommendation uh, that the real reallocation of five thousand dollars from the downstairs renovation assessment to the arena heaters be approved, and that the reallocation of eight thousand dollars from the sound system upgrade to the arena uh, concession upgrades be approved. Second, discussion. Mr. Nado, anything to add? No, Your Worship. Question in, all in favor? Passes, thank you. Item B, BC Hydro statutory right away. I would do that, Your Worship. I would move that the Mayor and Director of Corporate Administration be authorized to sign on behalf of the City of Revelstoke the statutory right of way filing on title. Section 219, a 219 covenant on 14 municipal parcels, commonly known as the Revelstoke Golf Course. Second. Discussion? I'm not sure that the motion seems to me that there's some words missing there. Um, I 
there should at least be an and at section 219. There are two documents that we have yes. Right, and a uh, right away on title and a section 219. Mm -hmm. uh, that's fine with the over your worship. So that's a and a seconder. And a your worship, and maybe just a bit further to make clear in favor of BC Hydro as per. No, there's no request in there. This is to do with some rehabilitation work along the outer banks of the golf course that are required as part of the completion of the work on Unit 5. So BC Hydro will be putting more riprap on the outside of the golf course and they need a covenant to allow them to do that. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, Worship. Yeah, you're right about that. But that is that the last two years ago when they did a big riding, they didn't do what they should have done. And they have have now that's supposed to be done. Yeah, they're fixing up what they yeah. what they failed last time. Yeah. Councillors, the amended motion then. All in favor? Passes. Item C, Stella Jones proposed amendment number seven to the force license A18992. I'm not going to step out on this. Um, I will note that I was the statutory decision maker that approved the amendment or the original stewardship plan for that force license. But I see that that was a long time ago in my history. So. Okay. So the motion is under I would do that, Your Worship. I got a referral letter be sent to Stella Jones requesting for further consultation with all user groups impacted by the proposed logging and that current recreational environmental values of the area be protected. I would note that the word protected it may be a bit inflammatory. It could be managed, it could be considered, it could be stewardship, it could be any number of things. But often protected in that environment means uh, something similar to the federal parks where nothing happens. Mm -hmm. Just not two bits into the motion. No, sirs? Your Worship, I wonder if instead of protected, is that it be um, mitigated and uh, plans for repair, much like they did on the Vicky Bench? I think it's just a point of debate. It might be just semantics that might be covered off. How do you feel? Could we just call it considered, Your Worship, rather than protect it? Are you going to amend your motion? Yes, I'll amend my motion to consider. To be considered, yes. Okay, with the second here, Councilor Scarsoff? Yes. Thank you, thank you. So the motion is amended then. Anything further? Call a question. All in favor? Opposed? Councilor Johnson? Um, no, I'm in favor of that. It's fine, thank you. Uh, no, item number D, the 2014 2024 Community Works Fund Agreement. I would move your worship that Mayor and Director of Corporate Administration be authorized to sign the 2014 to 2024 Community Works Fund Agreement on behalf of the City of Revelstoke. Seconder? Councilor Mixon? Those actually on the way, thank you, Federal Government in the province and UBCM, which is the Union of British Columbia Municipalities, wish to help communities build and revitalize their public infrastructure that supports national objectives of productivity and economic growth, clean environment, and strong cities and communities. Community Works Fund Agreement provides for the delivery of funding that may be received by UBCM from the Federal Government through three programs, one which is, of which is a Community Works Fund. The current Community Works Fund agreement for 20, 2005 to 2015 requires renewal in order to continue to receive this funding. And there are no known financial implications that are arising from this recommendation. Thank you. Councillors? Councillor Johnson? Um, <clears throat> I was just wondering if there's been any material change from the first period in terms of what our eligible projects. Um, I took a little look through to see if there was anything jumping out and I didn't see anything, but I don't know. Staff have any comments that we can do this now that we couldn't do before because there was some restriction on in terms of what the funds can be used for. Mr. Palmer and Mr. Lack. 
Graham? Um, I think it's a few words of your worship. I, I can't be really specific about it, but I can in general terms say that since the inception of the Community Works Fund, the, the parameters uh, of, of exchanges have broadened somewhat. Um, and so the projects that would have previously not have been approved would, would have a, a greater uh, propensity of being approved under the new program. So that, that has changed. I'm not sure we've had any further change in this particular group, uh, but those values have gone very, very far. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Councillor, anything further? Yeah. Call the question, call the group. Process now. Item E and F, um, I will recuse myself for. For the development permit for 1214 Downey Street, I sit on the board of the Revelstoke uh, Community Seniors Housing Society and sit on the board there of the management for that facility. I also have a personal relationship with the management at the uh, building at 555 Victoria Road. So I ask Councilor Scarling here the afternoon. You are? You are? Oh, yeah. That's what you're telling us. One of you. Yeah, it's a pretty straightforward application. 
we'll save for some other things. Further questions? We all call the question then. All in favor? All in favor. And we'll move on to uh, item F, which is the uh, call. <coughs> yes, Your Worship, I'll do this. That the development permit application submitted for property lot one plan NEP 79762 555 Victoria Road to and for exterior facade renovations on an existing shopping center be approved subject to the following condition. The elevation plans are to be included with the development permit at Schedule A, and that the corporate officer be authorized to issue the development permit once the above noted conditions have been satisfied. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Sprockman's going to give us a presentation. As noted, we have a development permit application for 555 Victoria Road for a shopping center. Uh, this uh, application was preceded by a development variance permit for a series of sign amendments at the last council meeting. Uh, the development permit wasn't quite ready at that point, but it's ready today to be reviewed by council. The renovations include works on the corner scene as well as on the awnings. Uh, and color updates as well as material updates throughout the uh, shopping center. So the color palettes you'll see in the bottom of the slides indicating the new color palettes being selected. Um, the update is supported by staff as it meets all of the city's bylaws and requirements and policies. Thank you, Worship. Thank you. Any questions? Councilman Johnson? I'm just wondering in these, if there's any, I mean, Victoria Road is not really a highlight of the community generally, I don't think. Um, I'm just wondering if in considering this, there's any consideration of the whole look of Victoria Road and the, where we might be going on that. Your Worship, the Victoria Road is an important corridor in the community, and it's something that's uh, been identified uh, for consideration in the next OCP process, uh, follow up to that OCP process. There's two areas that, that do require additional corridor work. One is in the downtown. Um, we need some additional design guidelines for the center uh, of the city. Another good one for consideration would be the Victoria Corridor. At this time, we do not have specific design regulations in place uh, for that corridor. Uh, it would be a, an opportunity to look at specific signage regulations and specific um, design criteria as far as uh, how parking lots and landscaping um, is done to provide some level of, of synergy along uh, Victoria would, would be a good opportunity. I, I'm uh, pretty excited by this this type of application. I think uh, you know I would agree with Mr. Stark and that uh, that is a major uh, interchange in Rumblestone. Most people that come into Rumblestone travel along there, and that being the probably biggest commercial venue we have on that street to to. Uh, have it uh, fixed up to a modern standard, I think it's pretty important. It's, it's, it's in your face, so to speak, when you come into town. So I think it's really good. It's going to be good for Elsto. It goes right along with the uh, uh, visitor center we recently completed, and I think it'll enhance that, that whole uh, area there. I think it's really good. Thank you, Mr. Strong. So, having hearing uh, no further questions, we'll call the question. All in favor?
the provision of 10,000 security in the form of cash or letter of credit for the removal of the existing home and the occupancy permit for the new home is not to be issued until such time as the demolition of the existing home is complete. Discussion, Mr. Trotter. Thank you, Your Worship. <clears throat> it's a minor amendment to the uh, building bylaw. Uh, it's currently in our building bylaw. It doesn't specifically address this issue. Not all properties have this opportunity. Uh, this issue was brought to light by this particular individual's request. Uh, other communities that we looked at uh, have a similar type of uh, policy in place or, or bylaw regulation in place. Although not all of them have it in uh, bylaw, it's just in policy. Um, staff felt that it was uh, probably applicable in this case to, to include a security provision. Um, so that it therefore it came in as a, as a bylaw. Uh, other communities do not include security. Um, some communities require significantly more, upwards of $20,000 or, or further in security. Uh, staff have recommended the $10,000 as, as a security bond ensuring that the applicant is, is serious about their application um, and the provisions that the uh, occupancy would not be given for the first house, or, sorry, for the new house, until such time as the old house is removed. Thank you, Thank you. Councillors? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I, I, unless I've missed it here somewhere, where is this place? It's 955 Bagley Road. That's within the city limits, isn't it? But you're not addressing one specific property. You're addressing all properties in the file on them. Yeah, this is the one that's driving it. That's right. Yeah. Councilor, just curious. Councilor Johnson. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I'm not suggesting, I don't think 10,000 is, is enough to remove an old house, but anyway, I'm not suggesting it be made higher I'm just wondering the practicality of the situation is I finished my house and I'm pretty much ready for a lockup on December 15th and there's six feet of snow on the ground and it's not practical. Am I going to get a temporary occupancy permit for my uh, new house anyway and wait until spring until the old one goes? There's a practicality you wish to, to most construction situations. Snow being a significant factor in the rubble slope. Um, it clearly states that occupancy would not be granted for the new home until such time as the old home is removed. So the expectation is that you would tolerate another winter in the old home until such time as you're ready to move into your new home and demolition it in the spring. Thanks, Your Worship. It's interesting that this was brought on by Eagle Homes. The letter was written by Eagle Homes to the city of Revelstoke. I think uh, Councillor Bender, uh, the Telefer properties across from the old Mount Baby School, oh, and several right. years ago their main home burned, and uh, shortly after Mr. Telefer passed away, so she's in a position. It's a pretty, pretty big piece of property. It's not just a small city lot, I believe. It's two and a half or five acres, so there's certainly a lot of room to move around there. It, it's interesting that Eagle Homes brought this forward to us and sort of, sort of asking us to pull up her socks and be a little more modernistic in this regard. Is that correct? Thank you, Your Worship. This has been an issue that's been a back burner issue for us. Um, it was something that was identified last uh, last fall as um, not being in our current bylaws. Right. Um, but this certainly was something when we began discussions when this permit arrived. Um, we, we did recommend to the table homes that they pursue it further and see that. Excellent. <coughs> We're moving forward. Councillors? Okay. Any question? All in favor? Opposed? Passes. That leads us to item H, which is the added into your binders, which is the big A development constraints. Yes, Your Worship. I'll bring forward that the city approach to getting water works district to enter into discussions to address long term water supply and quality concerns as they constrain development pursue funding opportunities for an independent review of the Big Eddy Waterworks system as it applies to these constraints to achieve water security for Big Eddy residents and businesses. 
there a seconder? Mr. Palmer, Mr. Gessler? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think Mr. Thomas would probably be a better. Uh, I saw his hand up there. Your uh, Worship, um, we have had uh, two developments in the last year that have um, uh, been delayed or deferred because of uh, concerns with the beginning board works system. And uh, it was concerns either with uh, coming from Interior Health or from um, the, the compliance with our bylaws for these new developments. So in particular, it's the fire protection um, requirements that uh, would require a new hydrant to be installed and that hydrant would have certain fire flows available for, for that type of development. Um, at this point, uh, we don't have confirmation that uh, those fire flows are available. And uh, so what we're asking for here is just that we have the opportunity to raise these uh, concerns with the Bugatti Waterworks District, knowing that um, we don't want to, uh, to be causing a, a problem with development in the community um, if there's a way that we can we can work with uh, the Bugatti Waterworks District. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I noticed that uh, it's the safety of the water down there. My question is, do we have enough water? Um, Your Worship, I've been working with uh, the Bugatti Waterworks District and Interior Health on a couple of projects over there. One of them, they've just started um, a groundwater study that's looking at um, the, I guess, the aquifer and um, the wellheads. We haven't, we haven't looked at anything on, um, on the actual distribution system. But the preliminary results from, um, from the study that I've seen on the groundwater is that there is plenty of water available in that aquifer for the VN and um, they also have a very large reservoir at the top of the hill. The pumps don't run continuously. They're, the pumps only run um, inter intermittently to top up that, that reservoir. So even in the middle of summer, they're not running their pumps to keep up with demand. <coughs> Thank you. Mr. Bender? Uh, could, could you make a, a few comments on the uh, availability in the case of emergency, like a large fire? Commercial, large, a commercial fire or something like that? Do we have enough capacity? Um, you, you worship, that might be something better described by the fire chief. Um, certainly there has been some challenges providing fire flows over there, and I'm, I'm not sure why there's challenges, but it would certainly be something that we'd be looking at um, to, to ensure that development could occur over in the beginning. Because there are a number of, as you know, large commercial, larger, commercial interests there. I, I see a number of hands up, and I'm going to speak, and then I'll turn it over to Mr. Palmer and the Council's darling. Um, I understand the Big Eddie Waterworks, and I go back many, many decades, but it, the Big Eddie Waterworks is independent from the city at this time, and the city has no control over the operations there. It was something that was inherited in its independence when the Big Eddie came into the city. Having said that, some of the operations are restricting bylaws that the city have for development purposes. So it's not the city in any sense being predatory on the Big Eddie Waterworks, but rather to develop an understanding of where those constraints are and to try and assist the Big Eddie Waterworks to address the needs both for the city, but also for interior health and other agencies that are now playing a bigger role in the supervision of water systems across the province. It's not unique in that the regional district have this in many of the water systems, where interior health are taking a very hard hand with the regional district. And in some cases, they put in whole new systems to, to comply with it. So it's just trying to assist the big A to comply. I thought it was good context around this. Um, Your Worship, just to uh, clarify a couple of questions. Uh, so first of all, on the fire, um, again, the fire chief isn't here right now. But it's my understanding that uh, 
by uh, routine that they send a water tender there because of concerns about inadequate supply for fighting, so they automatically do that for all calls. Uh, the second uh, significant issue is the water quality, so interior health uh, uh, and concerns about the quality, so that's a, an active component. Um, and then the, the constraints on the water system, uh, again, there's uh, two developments. One is the school district property, which they were hoping to subdivide. Um, that, uh, because of constraints in the water system, we can't do that at this point. Uh, and then there's another uh, private development that the costs, uh, so the potential costs associated to, to address the engineering items about supply uh, may be prohibitive of that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, well, there's a bit of a history lesson, as the mayor has mentioned here. The, this water system has been long standing and it has functioned reasonably well. I know that uh, several years ago, probably I'm guessing 20 or more years ago, there was some discussion about uh, running uh, city service into the Big Eddy, and that never happened. There was uh, some opposition from the Big Eddy, and, uh, and that was turned down. And unfortunately, uh, uh, probably should have happened, and now we're faced with this. And I think the most important uh, phrase uh, in this uh, recommendation is the water security portion of it. Uh, there's nothing more important in a community than, than water and having water security. And unfortunately, at this stage, uh, we don't apparently have that in the Big Eddy. And I think it's important that we move ahead with this review and get a real clear, concise picture of what is going to be required and what upgrades are going to need, and then uh, move forward with some funding opportunities and work it into the budget. As of right now, I don't believe we have very much uh, uh, worked into a budget to deal with this, and unfortunately, that's going to put us behind the eight ball moving forward. Uh, and I know that a lot of the business owners in the uh, Big Eddy are very concerned about this. They think that this is going to uh, stagnate their properties, and. That's uh, grossly unfair. So I think this really needs to uh, get our full attention and, and uh, find some resolve here in the near future. Okay, councillors, staff, councillor Johnson. Well, it, it seems to me there, there's the health issues, the, the, the drinking water supply is one thing, and then there's the, uh, the fire security thing and inadequate supply. To the, Quality is one thing, the quantity is another one. And I assume that the hindrance to development is more the quantity thing as opposed to the quality thing. And I'm just wondering if there's other alternatives. If, for example, I'm a developer and I want to build something on a little big baby school, if, if I can provide my own supply somehow uh, to deal with that issue. And meanwhile, the health issue is carried along on another track. I'm not a developer and I don't put out fires, so I don't know what the answer is. In the last 24 hours, I've had several hours of being yelled at by developers in the beginning. Um, and I think that this is the first step to try and address those questions, to see what sort of options are there, because development in the Big Eddy is being constrained by an agency that is not controlled by the city. So we're being blamed for an action that we can't control. And this is the first step in, in taking some proactive measures to try and address that question. Uh, Cost Johnson is absolutely correct, but this is the first step to, to put some answers to it because we can't simply sit back and say that's their problem. Thanks, Your Worship. Isn't this something that we could use the? Uh, we spoke about the Community Works Fund with, with, with the feds in the province. It would be a perfect application for something like that, where the majority of the funding would come from the city <coughs> governments rather than the residents and. We need to remember Big Eddy is still part of Revelstoke, even though they have a separate water system. But the fire thing, and I know speaking with the chief, for the trucks to leave the fire station and go across the Trans-Canada Highway into Big Eddy, and the adequacy of the water and the hydrants is, is really not enough to fight a major fire over there. We did have one in Mr. Lang's building last fall, and they were, uh, they were, it was nip and tuck, so. I think it's a perfect application for the Community Works Fund. Hopefully it's on the list. Mr. Thomas, I'm sure it is. 
and they'll be partnerships. Uh, yeah, just uh, you know, the works, uh, the Canada Works Fund. Uh, we have more, way more projects than what uh, oh, is available. Right. So uh, it, it'll be one of uh, several that we'll look at and we'll see if there's other funding over and above uh, the, the regular sources that might be available. And again, at this stage, it's assisting the Big Eddy Waterworks to address their their challenges. It's assisting. Councillors, call a question. All in favor? Passes. Thank you very much. This is on the communications. I'm going to go through these one at a time. If you've got anything, please step in. The RCP Community Policing Report for July of 2014. Anything to add, Sergeant? Um, no, Your Worship. Good. Thank you for a very nice report, actually. <clears throat> well, I'd like to take credit for your worship, but it is signed by Stan Sunday. I was in Disneyland when it was going on. So uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, helpful by being here. <laughs> What's the difference? Yeah. <laughs> doesn't uh, Disney have the rights to the logos? And yes, actually, they do. They do. Yeah, thank you. Um, the letter from the Green Communities Committee. And with that, I'd like to congratulate staff. Uh, and counselors for all the hard work, but it, this is a tremendous recognition for the community. Mm -hmm. The Affordable Housing Project Lease Letter Agreement. Tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Finance Committee Minutes of July 8th. Building Permit Summary for July. Committee minutes of April the 9th. Thank you. Projects. Just brought it to your attention because it looks as though the attendance of that committee is sterling. It is. Well, he wasn't there. But... Okay. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, was, was a motion that uh, Hanson was committed to write right? the minister highly requesting permission of the uh, Stop that right on the edge. Let's be done. That's with regards to Big Eddy Waterworks. Um, reviewing what, what's happening over there, I know how diplomatic you were in discussing this. Uh, the bottom line, though, is that nobody knows where the water lines are over there in Big Eddy. Um, how much, is, how expensive, do we have any idea how expensive a review of the actual situation is over there? The Big Eddy Waterworks have been fiercely independent over time. Yeah. And this is the initial thing. Attempt to try and say, look, you're, you're, the activities of the Big Eddy Waterworks are becoming a constraint on development. And can we help you to address some of these issues? So, this would be the first step in doing that. Do we know how much that would cost, Your Worship? I wouldn't guess anything. Okay, at this point. 
All right. Thank, Thank you. you. That's it for me. It may be very simple. It may be very complex and difficult. Okay. Alex? Yeah. Has there been any talk about the, or any recent talk about the city taking over the Yeti Waterworks? I think it's too early to address that one, Alex. Um, <laughs> but it, it's, as a topic of conversation, it happens all the time. But it's a real challenge. The, the Big Eddy Waterworks has been fiercely independent up to this point in time. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm very sensitive to that. Okay. Another thing um, Mike mentioned, he said that preliminary results showed there was a lot of water in their aquifer. So so where is the, the issue with water supply? Is it in there within their pipes or did they just That's pressure? the whole reason yeah. for the work that we're proposing, Alex, is to understand the system a bit better. And, and, and so that we can assist them to address the concerns that the city have as far as developments over there. There's a, a big unknown here that we need to have verified independently. Mm -hmm. okay. One other question, Your Worship, with regards to this, and this is with uh, regarding water quality. Um, they don't do anything with their water over there. Is there Could we install uh, some kind of chlorination? And I know that that would be just like a huge local issue in that side of the river. I'm gonna let Mr. Thomas answer that one. Sure. The well, worship groundwater is chlorinated before it enters the distribution system. Okay. Um, but uh, interior health requirements, following uh, this preliminary study that they're working on, uh, may push for further treatment, similar to what happened to the uh, city many years ago when we ended up with, uh, with our treatment plant. Um, chlorination may not be um, all that's required there. Still don't know where that's going from uh, from interior health perspective. But, yeah. And I wondered about the chlorination aspect of it because water uh, advisories are routine in the summer. Again, the, the Big Eddy Waterworks is virtually independent yeah. and we really don't know a lot about it. From this perspective, we have to be respectful for their operations of that. Um, okay. Hence, we shouldn't be guessing here. No. Thank you, Thank you, Your Worship. That's it for me. Good. Thank you, Your Worship. Motion to move the camera pursuant to 90 point for the road. Ninety point one E and E of the Visitor. Motion to move. All in favor?